Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matty? I am good, Brian. It's the Travers Day show. We got big races to talk about. Midsummer Derby, Matt. That's right. It's a big day. It's a it's a nice car to racing. Plenty, plenty of great one races, Matt. But of course. We want to start with the Midsummer Derby. $1.25 million, a mile and a quarter, Saratoga. Some of the greatest horses we've seen in American racing have been up there for the Travers Mat. And this year we have essential quality four to five on the morning line. I think he might be even lower when they spring the gates open. Fair enough, Brian. I think you're right. He may be less than that um, in this field. Uh, uh, you know, you have to look at it, seven horses, it's a pretty good field, but when you start comparing Essential Quality's record to the rest of the horses, I get the four to five. Yeah, yeah, and I, I guess there's uh, there's one horse who's lost twice in his life, but he's only had three lifetime starts. I'm talking about Miles D. So Essential Quality's one career loss, you're right, that record looks pretty good in this race, Matt. There were horses we've seen over the years. I'm just going to mention a few, like Affirmed and Silver Charm Matt, who never really won by big, big margins or very seldomly won by big margins. Essential quality seems like that type of horse. He knows how to get the job done, and he gets the job done. If not for some wide trip, uh, a wide trip at the Kentucky Derby, we'd probably be talking about a horse who's eight for eight now. And last time in the Jim Dandy, he overcame a very wide trip. Yeah, Brian, just one length. It was in the Kentucky Derby, one length away from uh, an eight race perfect, uh, perfect season. He's got three grade one. He's got he's won six graded races in his career, Brian. And the rest of this field combined only has three graded races. No one's won better than a grade three. The rest of them are looking to get their first grade one uh, essential quality. We know is going to get the distance. We've seen the determined turn of foot down the straight down the stretch so many times with this horse. Yeah, he, he grinds them down. And again, going back to horses like Affirmed and uh, Silver Charm, he also has enough tactical speed. He can be a little farther back if he needs to, but he, he can be right there if he needs to. And it, it's just a, he's, he's just a horse who knows how to win. Obviously a, a horse of real quality, um, and, and it looks like this field to me is in trouble against essential quality because a mile and a quarter, he's got a race over the track now. I think it was a good prep coming out of the mile and a half Belmont. He's working his way up to probably a better performance than he did in the Jim Dandy. But I thought the Jim Dandy was good when he, like I said, he was clearly very wide on both turns and gave the runner up, keep me in mind, all kinds of uh, ground lost there and he still was able to get the job done you could see in the last 100 yards he just wasn't going to let that other horse beat him I pretty much expect the same here Matt but let's look at the rest of the field there's six others there's some good horses in here Matt breaking from the rail is Midnight Bourbon Midnight Bourbon looks like he might have the most speed of the race yeah could be Brian but but for sure uh, Midnight Bourbon is probably the classiest horse in terms of his results, I mean, it's, you know, it's Midnight Bourbon and Keep Me In Mind who have been racing in the Triple Crown Series, have been racing in grade ones and grade twos, but Midnight Bourbon has had uh, very good results. I think 10 starts and only twice, Brian, um, has he been out of the money. And one of them was the Kentucky Derby when he ran pretty well. And the other one was in the, his disaster in the stretch uh, in the Haskell, it's hard to find anything bad to say about Midnight Bourbon. Uh, it's got that tactical speed. Um, so, yeah, I, I like him in here also. Yeah, Midnight Bourbon makes a lot of sense. Breaking from the rail, he's got speed. I, I, I think we could say even more than tactical speed. Yeah, he's not always on the lead, but he's got, he's got legitimate speed in a race without a lot of legitimate speed. I think he's going to go right to the lead, and, and I, I think it'll take a, a good race to beat him. I expect essential quality, the better horse, to beat him. But it will take a good uh, race by anybody else to pass Midnight Bourbon because a uh, mile and a quarter, tough horse on, on the front. You know, it, it's, it's going to be a 
it's going to be a difficult task for anybody in the race to go by midnight bourbon. I know a lot of people are talking about other horses, but uh, I'm looking at this morning line thinking, uh-oh, I, I think I like the top two favorites the best. You mentioned his consistency. Yeah, the Kentucky Derby was pretty bad considering he doesn't ever come from way out of it. He, he got really bothered at the start of that race, and he still moved up pretty well throughout the race. So I thought the Kentucky Derby was a pretty good performance, and then he would have been in the money in the Haskell. So you can say he's as consistent as just about anybody. And uh, yeah, I think he's the, the the main threat to essential quality, but there are some other interesting horses that I think have a shot to be maybe the second choice in here. Keep me in mind, of course, ran that big race in the Jim Dandy. And if you look at his format, despite not winning a race this year, he is working his way up. He's slowly and surely getting better. And uh, you could say that his last race was his best of the year. Yeah, and with just the maiden victory, uh, to his credit, in terms of first place finishes, uh, this guy, I think, has won over $600,000 already, um, uh, racing against tough company. Uh, like you said, uh, uh, that performance in uh, Jim Dandy was probably his uh, best recently, but his third place in the Ohio Derby was not too bad also. Yeah, and he was passing horses in the Kentucky Derby. He finished fourth in the Preakness. Uh, I'm not sure I like him better at a mile and a quarter than a mile and eighth, uh, but uh, he's in here and it, he deserves uh, some credit as a horse who's probably likely to rally up to hit the board. Although I don't think I like him as, a, as well as another rallier in the race, man. And I think Dynamic One is a horse that a lot of wise guys are going to talk about in the Travers. Uh, he didn't race after a bad performance in the Kentucky Derby for a few months, but when he came back, he sure looked good in winning the Curlin over the track at Saratoga. Yeah, he certainly did look good off of that layoff uh, and uh, began to live up to the promise uh, that we saw when uh, he was well regarded by the connections and finished second uh, in the Wood Memorial where he looked like a winner in that race, but got run down by his long shot uh, stable mate. Yeah, that Curlin performance is moving in the right, direct, the right direction. Pletcher's Barn is going well, but, you know, Brian, I, I want to see another good race. I want to see him make the step up to better company, which he's going to face in this Travers field. Right. That's exactly right, Matt. Um, in the Wood Memorial, I thought he looked like a developing horse, a horse who was getting good. And then, you know, lots of horses just can't handle the 20 horses in the class level in the Kentucky Derby, and he did not do well. But the return race was very good. But, hey, the Wood Memorial and the Curlin, that's not the, the level of competition he's seen in the Travers. So his only try at that level of competition was the Kentucky Derby, and he failed. I think this is a much better spot for him than the Kentucky Derby. Uh, as far as depth and, and, and size of field and, and readiness. But uh, you're right, he has to prove that he can beat horses like this, but still an interesting horse and a horse I think will get some play on the odds board. Mask Parade, Matt, uh, you know, you, you got to like, because he ran that big, big race on the Kentucky Derby undercard in a non-winners uh, of one allowance race. Uh, he's He's proven... He's validated that performance with two nice races, winning the Ohio Derby against good horses, and then coming back to run a good third in the Jim Dandy. Yeah, I would say that was a, a okay third in the Jim Dandy. I don't know if that was maybe a little bit of a disappointing performance. I don't know if, if Al Stahl had eased off on him a little bit uh, with the thoughts of the Travers uh, uh, in the back of his mind, but I, I think he's prepared well for this race and he's going to need to get back to that uh, Ohio Derby level or higher to be able to beat essential quality. Yeah, and, and I, I'm not sure I agree with you in that was the Ohio Derby better than the Jim Dandy or not? I, I'm not sure. I thought he ran a good race in the Jim Dandy, but I think with a horse who's had a lot of races, uh, he was one of those developing horses missing the triple crown who's had a lot of races. I, I feel like we know what he is pretty well now after a good Ohio Derby and a good Jim Dandy. I'm not crazy about upstarts going 10 furlongs, and, and I don't see a lot of reason in my mind why all of a sudden he turns it around against essential quality, maybe even keep me in mind in here. Uh, but but a nice horse. And, and, and yeah, if he moves up off that Jim Dandy, one to consider as one of the few horses with some early speed in the race. 
Uh, Miles D, I guess, is still the wild card in here. Matt, he's only had three races in his life. He's only had two races this year. All things considered, that was a good effort to be second in the curling for the Chad Brown training. Yeah, for a lightly raced horse, Brian, just in his third start, that was uh, that was a good good performance to finish second and beat the rest of that field. Hey, obviously, uh, 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 Chad Brown is taking a shot with Miles D in the Travers, the Travers being one of the few races, the big races that Chad Brown hasn't won, probably one of the big races that Chad wants the most win being uh, uh, from the, the Saratoga area where he grew up, but he's going to have to make a big, big improvement and continued development to be a contender in this field. Yeah, on, on the one hand, you could say, well, this horse has as much potential as anybody in the race after essential quality, because that was a good performance, second race of the year, third race of his life. But on the other hand, yeah, that, that step up from a mile eighth against dynamic one to a mile and a quarter against essential quality and midnight bourbon and keep me in mind and masquerade and dynamic one that looks like a pretty big jump up it seems like chad brown might be swinging for the fences a little bit here hoping that something sticks but it, it's just a little bit too much of a jump up for such a lightly raced horse for me to believe in his chances on saturday final horse in the race is the longest horse on the morning line king fury you look at his two dirt races, there's a lot to like in his two dirt races this year. Last time, he did not do much on the turf in the Saratoga Derby. Yeah, and you take a look at the morning line where uh, King Fury is uh, is 15 to 1. You got to uh, shake your head a little bit and say, really, 15 to 1 on King Fury, the long shot um, in the field? I don't really feel that way, that that's going to happen, but but who am I to argue with a very good lines maker uh, that uh, that 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 assigns the odds at Saratoga? But yeah, the the his win back uh, before the Derby in the Lexington was exciting and impressive and got you interested in the future of this horse. And then uh, then things didn't go well. He he couldn't run in the Derby. Um, came back and. Uh, was in that Ohio Derby with Mask Parade and keep me in mind and ran a nice second and then more uh, difficulties with the quarantine at uh, Kenny McPeak's barn and uh, McPeak gave him a race he needed to have a race and it happened in that turf start so I'm not concerned about you know uh, where he finished in there he's an interesting horse to me Brian especially if those odds stay up in anywhere close to uh, 15 to one. Yeah, I think he's a double digits horse, Matt. Uh, but I, I also think he was the best horse in the Ohio Derby. I, I've seen that race uh, a few times now. And I, I thought he was the most interesting race of anybody kind of between horses bounced around. And he, he was running a little better than keep me in mind at, at the end and certainly gaining on the winner. Uh, yeah, the turf race doesn't bother me. I mean, it, it really boiled down to a kind of a funny prep and they thought maybe he'd take to turf. He got an outside post and, and a tough race to have an outside post and he, and he didn't do a lot of running, but on the other hand, he wasn't embarrassed in the race either losing by less than 10 lengths. So I think what it boils down to is a prep and it's a, it's probably a, a good prep for a mile and a quarter race. So yeah, interesting long shot for me too, Matt in King Fury. Uh, let's go to another race on the card. I mean, there's a bunch of races we could uh, dissect here a little bit, Matt, but the personal ensign has a lot of interest. Uh, Latruska is still a candidate if you're looking at the horse of the year race, Matt, because what she's done, this, this Mexican superstar, this daughter super saver, in her last three races with the Apple Blossom, the Ogden Phipps, and the Florida Lee, three different tracks, I mean, she has really been something this year, and now she comes into the personal ensign at Saratoga as clearly the one to beat. And uh, I, I wonder, I wonder, because the, the graveyard of champions, the graveyard of favorites at Saratoga is, I'm not willing to jump off of essential quality or assume that he he's going to be beaten in the Travers, but maybe, maybe Latruska take a shot to end the winning streak here in the personal ensign. Am I crazy, Matt Shipman? 
You probably are not crazy, Brian, um, but hey, let's talk a little bit more about Latruska, who's won five out of her last six races, is the, you know, clear-cut winner of the older dirt female division that at the beginning of the year we thought was going to be one of the, the glamour and most competitive uh, divisions with Monomoy Girl and Swiss Skydiver knocking heads, but it just hasn't played out that way, what it has played out as the Latruska division. But Brian, like you said, uh, 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 some excellent performances, some absolutely amazing uh, performances this year, that Apple Blossom, the, uh, the Fleur de Lis, the Ogden Phipps, uh, several different tracks, but, you know, lately, uh, Latruska has been traveling all over the place uh, 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 in barns due to different kinds of factors, the backstretch at Churchill closing down and at Keeneland. She sp just spent some time for a few days at Monmouth Park before coming to Saratoga. Is all that bouncing around going to be a factor? I don't know. She's quite a veteran uh, and, and looks formidable right now but how long is that winning streak going to keep going six to five as you said at saratoga yeah six to five and she could be lower too off that recent form uh latruska has been great hey she's 15 to 20 lifetime yes i realize a lot of those races came in mexico city but she's uh just turned the corner this year and become a terrific american mayor certainly the front runner as matt says for an eclipse award right now but this could be a tricky spot. One of the reasons I think it's a tricky spot, and this is me jumping to an assumption here, but I just have a feeling Baffert's Philly, who's got a lot of talent. Her name is As Time Goes By. I don't really love her in this spot, but I think she's going to. I think she's going to show some real speed in here, because last time she got uh, uh, a little trouble out of the gate and was was too far back, and that didn't work for her at all when she dares the devil beat her easy out on the west coast. So I think it, As Time's as time goes by, it's going to show speed. And that could be a new thing for Latruska to deal with. And there's also some good fillies who should be in the neighborhood early. And of course, one of those is Swiss Skydiver. Matt, I am not ready. People are so quick to jump off the bandwagon. They must skin their knee and, and, and other small injuries jumping off that bandwagon so hard. I'm not ready to jump off Swiss Skydiver's uh, bandwagon yet. She's had a strange year since uh, uh, an impressive win in the Beholder Mile. Last time she ran against the boys, she wasn't a match for Nick's go, but it's not really a big negative saying you're not a match for Nick's go right now. Uh, sure, Brian, you, you know, uh, you, you make a valid case, but having doubts about Sis, Swiss Skydiver um, and wanting to see her get back to the fantastic form that she showed last year and in that Beholder Mile, to me is a valid question or concern. I wouldn't call it jumping off the bandwagon or anything like that. For you, it would be, Brian, because I know you have been a really, really big fan of Squiz Skydiver, but but just looking at the field and looking what's going on, um, uh, I want to see Squiz, Swiss Skydiver get back to that form. And she may very well do that in the personal ensign. Yeah, and I think she'll have some odds now because I think Latruska is a heavy favorite. And after that, you know, Swiss Skydiver, perhaps Royal Flag are the two horses they're looking at, but they could be quite a bit higher because this is a pretty deep field. Let's talk a little bit about Royal Flag, Matt. Uh, last year in the Shuvi, two lesser known horses uh, ran 1-2 with Latruska winning that Shuvi and Royal Flag was making up a lot of ground in last year's Shuvi at Saratoga. She sure made up a lot of sh uh, ground last time in winning the shoe V. Royal flag looks like an up and coming older mare for trainer Chad Brown. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, I'm probably in the best form of her career right now, which we need to, to note, Brian, is 10 races. And in those 10 races, she has never run out of the top three. So this has been a, you know, a consistent quality horse who right now appears to be in excellent form coming into this race. Yeah, and, and if I am right about as time goes by, really wanting to take the race a little bit to Latruska early, maybe Swiss Skydiver sitting off the pace or maybe somebody coming from way back like Royal Flag likes to do will be benefited by that. 
Royal Flag has never beaten this type before, but Matt's exactly right. She's never been better. One of the things I fear most about Royal Flag in here, Matt, is her two races at Saratoga. It looks like she come, she really likes to come rolling down that main track strip at the spa. So definitely a real threat. But I think Swiss Skydiver and Royal Flag are the clear second, third choice in here. You still got a lot of good horses. Last year when Swiss Skydiver won the Alabama impressively, Matt, it's a good, uh, a good race for Swiss Skydiver over the track. The two horses that ran second and third in that grade one Alabama last year were Bonnie South and Harvey's Little Goyle. Bonnie South will have odds after not lifting a leg in, in, last time in the Delaware Handicap. And Harvey's Little Goyle will be making her first start on dirt this year after running some tough, tough turf races. Yeah, I find Harvey's little girl a little interesting in this field, especially because uh, she is going to come with good odds. Um, she started out the year uh, really well with a, with a nice victory um, uh, in New York, but the last two, fourth in the Diana, fifth in New York, have been a little bit lackluster. So Bill Mott saying, hey, let, let's go back and Try the dirt again, where, like you said, Brian, she was third in the Alabama at last year. She won the Bisanda at Aqueduct on the dirt. Is the dirt going to wake her up? And will we see more from uh, Harvey's little girl? I don't know, but maybe at double-digit odds, it's worth a shot. Yeah, and, and she has some tactical speed. This American, this uh, daughter of American Pharaoh can handle the dirt, folks. And I'm not going to jump on that's lackluster comment in the last two turf races. I, I just think she caught a wet turf course in the New York handicap and she doesn't quite have the turn of foot as some of those European fillies uh, that beat her in the Diana, but she's running pretty good in those races. Again, she might run pretty good here to run third or fourth or fifth again, but yeah, she, she is interesting if the odds are big and I, I do expect Bonnie South to bounce back. I don't think that Delaware race was the real Bonnie South. Uh, in fact, she beat Royal Flag a few starts back in a good race at Keeneland. Dunbar Road, back class, Matt. Graceful, uh, Graceful Princess is a daughter of Havre de Grasse, and uh, she ran maybe her career best last time at Monmouth. So just a lot of interesting mares in here. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, you, Graceful Princess, uh, uh, one of those regally bred uh, horses from Whisper Hill and Mandy Pope uh, that got a nice stakes win in there for uh, for Todd Pletcher. Uh, Bonnie South has run well. I don't know. I think I've... Uh, uh, lost enough money on Bonnie South in the, in recent races, however. All right, fair enough. Don't hold a grudge, Matt Shipman. Don't hold a grudge. Hey, that, the, the, the Travers and the Personal Ensign were the two we uh, decided to focus on, Matt, but you look at up and down this card, and there's a lot of interesting races. I think the Jerkins Memorial is, is super interesting. It's not a big field, but when you, th you tell me Jackie's Warrior and Life is Good are, are going to go out there, and there's other speed in this race, Matt, I I don't know what to think is going to happen early in the Jerkins Memorial. I guess it's a race to see who gets on top 10 yards out of the starting gate and see how far you can go. But in Jackie's Warrior and Life is Good, I think you've got two of the more interesting free roads in the country. Well, Brian, and, and, and uh, it, it is easy when you talk about those two to forget about Drain the Clock, who is also crazy fast uh, horse. Um, all three of the sprints. Brian on this undercard are just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I the jerk is I don't know what to think. Is it possible that life is good could 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 come back from a March layoff and and be able to handle the likes of uh, Jackie's Warrior and drain the clock and the kind of speed that's in there? I don't know. Uh, he's been a heck of a horse. Todd Pletcher says he is absolutely training fantastically and loves everything about this horse um, uh, in his first start in that barn since uh, being moved away from uh, Bob Baffert. There are those that think maybe life is good is actually better suited to this kind of sprinting than the Kentucky Derby Trail. Yeah, and, and he's been off almost six months, but the last time we saw him, he beat Medina Spirit by eight lengths, who, of course, went on to finish first in the Kentucky Derby. So life is good. How no, who knows how good he is? And, he, and he's always shown a lot of speed. Very difficult race to return because I don't think there's a faster horse in America than Jackie's Warrior, his Amsterdam, where he 
drill during the clock last time on, a, on an off track, fair enough, but it was just a monster performance. And I, I, I have become a big Jackie's Warrior fan. I'm, I'm kind of geeked to see what happens in this race because on paper, it just looks like a suicidal pace for almost every horse in the race. And, and we might have two of the fastest horses in the country, if not the two fastest horses in the country in there. So very interesting. I'm also a Gufo fan, Matt. I, I love the name Gufo, but I love the way Gufo just comes running every time. I don't think he's going to be the favorite in the Sword Dancer. I think this is a race they've been looking for, though. Last time he was at Saratoga, he came flying at domestic spending and just missed in the Saratoga Derby a year ago. I like Gufo's chances against a good field in the Sword Dancer. It's another good field, Brian. You're right. And then, you know, he certainly is one that you got to consider in that race. Absolutely. Forgo, you mentioned the other sprints. Forgo, Lexitonian, can he do it again? The ballerina, can anybody touch Gamine, Matt? You want to touch on either of those a little bit? Oh, the Forgo, Brian, I think is an absolutely terrific field. Uh, 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 you've got Mind Control, who seems to be back on his game with that with that last victory uh, since moving to the Todd Pletcher barn. Whitmore uh, in, in a field that appears to have lots of speed to set up his closing move. Uh, Yalpan for the Asmussen barn. Um, speedy, speedy horse is going to try seven furlongs for the first time, but we've seen Asmus and do this before, get these six furlong specialists to uh, stretch out and do great things. Uh, uh, another terrific field. You got Frenzy Fire in there. Uh, so many runners uh, in these seven furlong races. And of course, uh, Gamine, I don't know. Uh, why, they just, why don't they just give the winning trophy to Gamine for the ballerina right now? Probably so. Maybe Wisconsin can come running at her, but uh, uh, yeah, the ballerina looks like Gamine's race to lose. Uh, earlier, I said Jockey's Warriors. I think the fastest horse in America, maybe it's Gamine, the, the, yeah. the four-year-old filly. Uh, clearly, the forego out of all those interesting sprints, though, is the best betting race. As Matt said, it's deep, and I think it's very wide open. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's a good day of racing at Saratoga. Matt, how about we get back to those top two races we talked about? Let's get our picks out. We did pretty well last week. Let's start with the Travers, Matt. Give me a bomb on top in the Travers, sir. I can't do it, Brian. I, I can't do it. Uh, uh, Essential Quality has just such a tremendous class edge, performance edge on this field. Um, uh, I, I can't not pick Essential Quality as my top pick. And again, leaning on class and performance for me, uh, um, it's it's a cold exacta, essential quality over midnight bourbon. Yeah, and and, and boring as this may be, I'm not going to disagree with you. Those are my top two. I think midnight bourbon is likely to finish second or third in here as the pace setter, uh, but I think he's the most likely horse to run second behind essential quality. I I just don't think they're going to beat essential quality in here. Uh, keep me in mind has a shot to get in there. I, I, I don't like them now as one of the choices or one of the second choices. I think dynamic one might be the one that could run a big race and beat midnight bourbon for second, but I'm not sure that I trust him yet. King for King fury is definitely my long shot to throw into the exotics, but unfortunately I'm awfully chalky here in joining that essential quality one. Midnight Bourbon, too. How about the personal ensign? Can we pick against a favorite in this one? Though? I am going to. I am not going to pick uh, Latruska on top. I am not going to pick Swiss Skydiver on top. I am going with Royal Flag as my top pick, and I'll put Latruska in second. Yeah, I think that's an interesting pick because I think there will be some speed. I said it already. I won't repeat myself, but uh, I just think she gets bet, the Chad Brown factor. I think she's close to the second choice with Swiss Skydiver. And I trust Swiss Skydiver's class. I think, I think she'll be dismissed just a little bit because of that fourth, well-beaten fourth uh, in the Whitney. So I think she can stalk and pounce and run a big race. I still have faith. I'm going to go Swiss Skydiver, Matt. I'm going to try to beat Latruska too. Latruska would be my second pick. Uh, Royal Flag obviously is a threat, but we both – thought Harvey's little Goyle might be a long shot to throw in there as well in the personal anthem. Well, that's our show on a big day of racing, the biggest day of racing all summer long at Saratoga. We'll have more from Saratoga next week, Matt. But before we talk about next week, 
let me get a parting shot from you, my good friend. Yeah, Brian, hey, it's a terrific uh, day of racing at Saratoga. Uh, I hope you enjoy uh, the races. And uh, once again, as always, I want to thank our friend Tony Bada Bing for putting together the show. Oh, thank you for joining me every week, Matt. And thank you folks for watching. Hey, if you haven't yet hit the subscribe button here, hit it for us. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss any more shows. We also want to thank our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That is Derby Wars. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Thanks to my friend, Tony Bada Bing for producing this show. Next week, I think we have the Jockey Club Gold Cup to lead the way, Matt. We'll be right back here next week on another edition of Horse Center. See you then.